Hi, so my name is Ethan. This is, and I'm Natalie. This is my sister Natalie. <laughs> and we've been waiting for a while to make this video because we had to wait for the court case and stuff to wrap up. For you guys in our personal lives, you kind of know what really happened, but I mean, I say my close friends and family, everybody knows the full story, but this is kind of how we want to bring this to making it more public versus just making a couple of Facebook posts talking about it. So. On October 3rd, around 3 in the morning, this dude came to our house, doused my sister's car in gasoline, and set it on fire, blowing up hers and my dad's car, almost burning down our house, and also having to total out my mom's car as well. There was hundreds and thousands of damage that was done, and honestly, it's we're still, we still have to go to like court and store for it and stuff, but... Sentencing is already done, so we can talk about this kind of stuff right now, but we can't mention names because of certain legal reasons. What we can talk about is the details of what happened and what they got as a punishment, and honestly, I think it's bullshit because they didn't get nearly enough of what they should have. It was just a normal day, a normal night on October 2nd, went to school, went to volleyball, went to work, came home from work like 9.30, you know, I fell asleep at around like 12, so... Clearly, I didn't get that much sleep. Actually, it was at 1.16 in the morning when it happened. I thought it was like 3. Yeah. yeah. So, I was asleep. You know, I was kind of like crying earlier because I was like crying about college. And then I had posted it on my Finsta, which was kind of stupid. And um, so, I was woken up because my mom opened my door and she goes, Natalie, your car exploded. And I was like, I knew there was something wrong with it because... The engine light was on so I just thought it was like a mechanical issue you know and so I go when I, I look out my blinds why are you laughing it's just funny why is it funny <laughs> my car exploded oh my check engine light was on. yeah That's I, know, like, I don't know that much about cars and so I look out my window and I'm like holy crap my car is literally like the flames were like literally I don't even know how like 20 feet high that's how that's how much gas was used and like at the time like I, none of us knew what happened so Ethan you can tell what happened because you were awake so pretty much what happened after that I was working on like a YouTube video it, super yeah super late at night and I heard a boom and I was like okay it's probably thunder then I heard another boom and I was like okay this is weird so I run out from my bedroom and well, I, well first before I ran out I opened up the curtains and I just saw bright orange. I was like, something's wrong. So I ran out and I'm standing in the living room in my freaking boxers and I just see my, <laughs> my sister's car is on fire. And I'm just like, like what the hell? So I'm on the phone with 911. My mom comes out and we were just like, it It was so unbelievable. The only thing, we, I mean, we just reacted the way anyone, like also I mean, we didn't lose our minds right away. I mean, so pretty much we got everyone out of the house. We got the dogs outside as well. And firemen came they put it out and literally it burned off like the front side of our house I'll... as all the damage that was done which is unreal like How... it didn't even seem real especially when it was happening but like even now i'm like my car is gone like it was it's literally toast well she's got a caddy now so yeah <laughs> <laughs> but anyways so after that all happened, after the firemen came and everything, we have security cameras on our house. So we obviously, we go to check it. We're like, okay, so there's no way her car just spontaneously combusted unless there was a serious electrical problem. And it's like a 2008 car, which... No, it's 2010. To, okay, so, two, <laughs> so 2010 car. And it's... You never see that. I have a 1999 I don't even have those kind of problems. Oh, so, this made me so mad because we were just like, like so, after so, like hours of standing in like outside, literally the ground was all wet because it rained or something like the day before. And so we came inside and like all the policemen were like, okay, we're just going to see like, since you have security cameras, we're going to see like if something happened. And like, this is when I was getting pissed. Like, um, so we're like going over the footage, going over and then. It made me so mad because the policeman was like, oh, that looks kind of like a spark. And it was just like the reflection from our house light. And I was like, no, that's not it. So we're still waiting, waiting. And we see someone walk up to my car and...
like it set a chill like through my whole body i was like you're kidding me like you're seriously kidding me someone actually did this like i just don't understand how someone could do that to someone else like i started standing up and i was like punching my fist and ethan went off and my dad went off like they were so mad like the anger like ethan literally was punching the punching bag so hard his knuckles were like bleeding yeah, that was, yeah. that, it was crazy. Um, to say, like, the reaction of just, it's like, because before, it's like, we thought, oh, it was an electrical problem, maybe, like, there were some wires that were crossed and stripped, and the car was on fire, so we were, we, we were all pretty chill before that, honestly, like, we were almost, like, joking about it, because, like, yeah, because we were, like, laughing, like, oh, Natalie's car, like, blew up, like, hot right. toast, but then, right. then I was like, oh my god, like, our house is, like, on fire right now, and mm. I started freaking out, See, and, and like it, it really set in when we watched the security footage because when all, all we saw was like the first frame was someone just dumping gas all over it just but to see that what, what i mean it mine i felt mine and my dad's just like hard just drop into our guts and it was like just like the hair just like stood up on my arms and i just was ready to fight somebody after going over some footage and talking to her friends, her friends were actually the ones that said, Natalie, hey, is this, do you think this could have been this person? Yeah, and yeah. like, at first I was like, you know, I don't know, because like, I hadn't talked to this person in like, a few months until they had messaged me on my Finsta, because I had blocked them on like, everything. But it was so weird because I had spent the night at someone's house, and in the morning they were like, so the police think that it's kids natalie and i was like oh my gosh like i have no idea who could have done this like i was thinking i was like who could have hated me that much and i was like thinking thinking and my friends were like you know this person's a little off maybe you should think about that it was them like or him i mean <laughs> mm -hmm. or yeah maybe you should think that it was him and i was like you know what i'm gonna tell the police everything and so i told them and they were like, okay, thank you, like, we'll get back to you. And it was so messed up because right after the detectives left, a car comes down my driveway. And it wasn't a car that we recognized. Two boys driving down my driveway, turned around in my driveway, and my neighbor got pictures of them. And they traced everything, and they found out who it was. I didn't even know one of them. The other one was the one that we had suspected it was. Then we had to wait for what felt like forever for them to prove that it was them, for the police to prove that they did it. It, it was it was pretty crazy the nights after it happened. So it was me and my dad were the only ones that stayed at the house everyone else left. And we, um, I went out to just like the edge of our property and I was just armed to the teeth ready to take down anyone by any means necessary and so nobody just came and tried to do it again because i i was prepared and it, what's crazy is, is i wanted them to come back because i wanted to be able to do something because i didn't want something to ever happen to my family ever again i remember i was just so relieved before my volleyball game my mom had called me and she was like natalie they admitted it the police got them to admit it and i was like oh oh thank god but saying the police had said they're no danger to society so they were living their lives like normal so i had to get a restraining order against both of them it would give me peace of mind to know that they are not allowed anywhere near me living freely for at least five months so, yeah they blew up two cars and almost destroyed burnt. the other one it was just like mm -hmm. melted like it was destroyed <laughs> they almost burned down our entire house and they got to live freely and get this all they got was two weeks in juvie and, and one of them got one week the driver yeah. we assume was the driver right. so he got so he got one week and they have an intense probation with a hope to heal they had to redo our whole driveway. They had to paint our house. Police officers and firemen, they tracked a bunch of soot into our house. So we had to get our entire carpeting redone upstairs. And also 
everything painted upstairs. So our house was literally flipped upside down, and we had craters in our driveway for like two months, which is insane. No one should ever have to go through this, but we feel the need to talk about this because people should know that there are real dickheads like this. And it's, I think people need to know the part. I didn't, I talked to this person for a span of like a month. And in that month, hung out maybe three times. After she figured out that he was bad news, she completely cut contact and this guy was still harassing her. And yeah, to, show you just... how to, to show you how sadistic this guy is, he was laughing and smiling on the day of his sentencing. You feel safe in your own house and it's like, I couldn't even live here for a very long time. Like I just, I couldn't, I came home, I showered and then I left and I got my clothes and I was good. And I just was like, I had to remove that situation from my life we, sh we figured we should bring this to light because these young men i say they're terrorists they committed a federal crime they almost killed our family in our sleep nonetheless if i wasn't awake or if i wasn't living at home say i d i don't even want to picture what could have happened my dad said you gotta rely on smoke detectors and you gotta rely on and then it's like you're, you might have been trapped you know it's like once you're trapped, it's like you can't get out. And then the worst part is that, like, they probably wouldn't have gotten caught if that happened. And they would have killed literally five people. And so they actually, they committed second degree arson and third degree arson. But the third degree arson was dropped from the record. And since they're juveniles, they will have a sealed record. But, like, obviously, like, they can't get a government job or anything. Because they, like, those jobs will find that they did this. You know, it's like if they were an adult this outcome would have been so different, the punishment that they got. Quite frankly, it's bullshit. I think our justice system is just fucked. And yeah, I, I agree. Because the severity of these crimes, they didn't get nearly what they should have gotten. And honestly, quite frankly, I hope they rot in hell, and I hope they have a terrible life. And I just wish nothing but pain and misery on them honestly i wish nothing but the worst for all of them and i i have no forgiveness for anybody Peace worker she said some really important things that i think really gave me like their perspective on the situation they said she said that they both of them in both of the days that we were in court she said he doesn't understand the severity of this crime she said it over and over he doesn't understand the severity of this crime and she also said, when I asked him why he did it, he had no logical reason why he did it. He couldn't give me a reason why. And I'll let you know, this kid is also a drug dealer. And, and then he didn't even get in trouble for that. And, like, that makes me so mad because, like, he's already getting in trouble for everything, like, else. But, like, that was only two weeks, you know? It's like... Here's, here's, the, here's the crazy thing. This kid had around seven months of free living and between that when he committed this first crime he already has another criminal investigation going on with him as we speak right now for something totally different and we're not going to talk about that at all because that's something to deal with the schools and no, i have to do it doesn't yeah. have to do with us <laughs> so overall guys we just wanted to bring this to attention to more people to shed more light on it to expand on the things that say we um, some people didn't really know about and it's also good to know for say almost like a PSA where it's like be the, careful who like you the, talk to it's like there's there's, there's crazy people out there and um, don't don't take it if someone does this to you beat the living shit out of them Ethan you can't say that yeah you can you know if you guys have any questions I mean just uh, put in the comments and whatnot we'll do our best to answer the ones that we are allowed to so but thanks for watching guys and um, depending on how many, say, responses and stuff there is, maybe we'll talk about it some more depending on what you guys have to ask. But thanks so much and see you later.